see him go for in the gopher hole. He's eating my garden. It's really pissing me off. All right, folks, Tommy Cow here, and I'm on the deck. And I gotta tell you, I've got a real issue with a varmint, a groundhog that is eating my garden. I'll show you that in a minute. But what I've got here is a have a heart trap. Now, I was gonna show you some baits that can be used. I've already baited this trap. Uh, with an apple and some corn. I've got some corn shucks. I've actually thrown some corn over the deck. But basically, this is the back end of the trap where we'll release them from. The way this trap works, it's basically on a cable. Do that right there. Okay, now let's go down here. There's the mound. That's his mound. Now, he's been back here for a couple of years. I say he's full grown. He's... He's got to be 14 pounds. I'm going to set this down. I'm throwing. Um, I know he, he runs along this fence. I'm going to be kind of quiet. Spot. I'll show you. The, the garden is up around the other side. There's his hole. Look at that. The size of that damn hole. So he's running all over there. My garden is up on the other side. So I'm gonna just set this right here. Do a little bit of this action. Let's see if we can't catch this somewhere. Alright. He's cute. I tried to put up some lattice to protect the cucumber. Let me take you back there and show you that cucumber. There's the trap. Okay. Oh. I mean, this really. When you start eating my cucumbers, hey, that means war. I mean, I love cucumbers. Now, just to show you, we've been getting a bunch. Good sized cukes. Like that. But I'll show you the damage. One thing I found out is that these cucumbers. They actually need um, those leaves. He's eating the leaves off these here. He's not able to get up to the top ones over here. But he's nibbling. I had some lattice leaned up to protect him from the other side. And I'm getting a bunch of cukes. Lots of uh, pollination here. Lots of bee activity, which I'm proud, happy to see that. But I'll show you. These cucumber leaves, look at that. See how he has just devoured them. The stems. I had lattice up here. And he was getting in. He was getting in. Down on the corner where I have another gate. And he had a trail. He was coming up in here. Climbing up on this. Oh, but hey, just a little stop in the garden. We're, you know, I think these black-eyed Susans are attracting more pollinators. But, uh... As you can see, we're doing the uh, Florida weave on the tomatoes. And I don't get a lot of light back here. This is full sun for this place. It's right now, about 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm starting to get some tomatoes. But you can see, he did eat a tomato. See that? He ate that. He ate one of my tomatoes. That means war. And I've got, you know, some lattice here. I'm trying to keep him out. But he doesn't want to stay out. Hey, look. Okra. That's a good size okra plant. Look at that. Yeah. Got some okra coming in. All right. But, uh, yeah, now that the tomatoes are up, once I get them up to about six foot, they're really going to start to produce for me. But I don't get a lot of light over here. So this Florida weave is the deal. Getting them all the way up to six foot. Garden's come along pretty good. I'm going to get tons of cucumbers. All right, let's hope we can catch that damn varmint. Hey, there is ways to divert them, you know. Keeping them out is one way. But uh, this is a gopher skunks, chipmunks. We use it a lot in lawns for uh, moles and bowl control. Basically, the active ingredient of this is, is nothing more than uh, citron, uh, not citronella, uh, castor oil. But there are some other things in it. Um, 
we can see what the active is. Castor oil, 20%, botanicals. Um, they're not really telling you on this particular bag. Mint oil, cedar oil. It's on peanut hull. So uh, I find it definitely works great for uh, moles and lawns. Runs them off. And they want you to do it a certain way. But hey, I think I'm, I got a more serious issue. He doesn't care. I've already applied this. He doesn't care. It doesn't bother him at all. We just need to catch him and haul him away from here. Well, folks, it looks like we caught something. We caught a possum. He's not the guy. It's not the one we wanted. All right, but he's got to go somewhere. Folks, I'm 0, 0 for 2. This time I catch a little raccoon. Man, I need that gopher. That groundhog. All right, I'm taking you to the park. Go out that way. There he went. Cool. Man, 0 for 2. Is he coming back? God, I'm just going to chill. Wildlife. Alright folks, a little garden update and varmint update. We're uh, doing okay. It looks like the I've actually secluded the uh, varmint, the big groundhog. He was getting in right over here on that corner. And I put a block, blocked his butt because he had a trail coming down here. So he's left the tomatoes alone. And I got tons of cucumbers now. As you can see, oh yeah, we're loaded now. I'm going to take some of these to my friend Ellen Ashley. Look at that, we got a squash. Nice. Things are moving, more cukes. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get rid of this varmint. I want to talk about these tomatoes for a minute. Now you can see on my, uh, what you call the um, Florida Weave. Oh, and I'm getting okra, too. Lots of good okra. It's delicious. Um, well, got a ripe tomato. I'm going to pick it. As you can see. Okay, now, see, I have very little light. This tree has... I shouldn't have planted it. The Jap maple. It's, you know, it's got me in that crepe myrtle. There's just no way I'm going to get any light down here. But, hey, I'm getting six hours, and I'm starting to produce... It's 1st of August. I've got everything up to about 6 feet on the Florida Weave. And now that I'm up there, once I get up there to this 6 foot level, I'm gold. And they can really get a lot more light. They're going to be probably getting 6, 7 hours of light. And I'll, I'll weave this guy through here. Get on up to about there. And uh, hey man, we'll be, we'll be rocking and rolling on some tomato action here before long but i did want to share with you this florida weave i'm already up six foot look at that oh and the goji berries are going nuts yes finally coming in like crazy um you know and you could see these this foliage on a lot of these plants oh check it out little tree frog right there see him he's sleeping on that leaf these leaves on a lot of vegetable plants, like basically your kirkabits, your, your cucumber, don't have to worry about this fungus. Those leaves are primarily, they are for photosynthesis, but they're protecting the fruit. And what he was doing, the groundhog, was eating the foliage. So you see where he took it off here, 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 everywhere he ate. And it was that foliage by the plant is really designed to protect these little tender fruits down here. And uh, so you can't do that. So really, I probably should have thrown an umbrella over it or a screen. A little plant bug. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, bees. See, they're pollinating everything. I love it. And, you know, the black-eyed Susans have really helped. The beneficial plants had to attract some uh, some good pollinators to my garden. But basically, you know, I'm not worried about this fungus. So I'm not going to spray this. I plan to eat 
this produce and I don't want to fungicide on that but they're really their purpose these big broad leaves which are susceptible to diseases is to protect the fruit and just kind of blanket them and keep them nice and cool during the day so they can explode into huge cucumbers oh my god those are going to be so delicious I mean that is a freshie yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, folks. Well, Tommy's signing out here from the garden for now. Here with the three little pigs. And, uh, hey, what are you doing here? And just enjoying a beautiful summer day. All right, folks. Signing out for now. I'm trying to pet. I'm trying to pet that bee. I was just petting him. Petting a bee. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to be bothered. Just trying to pet you, boy. You don't want to be pet. Mm. Want to be pet? Just trying to pet your back. That's all. Oh yeah, you're a sweetie. Your little sweetie bee. Getting all that nectar. Oh, you're a sweetie. You like me, Patty. Just give me a little pet. Just a little pet. Oh, you're working. That's how you pet a little... What are we out here? That's how you pet a really cool little... Bee. She's a queen. Alright folks, Tommy Cow here on the lawn. It's a dusk. The time of day. Look, we're getting a lot of... Some squash now. Cucumbers coming in. Bonta for harvest, but guess what? Groundhog's been back. Uh, the gate's ajar down on that end, and he's been getting in the gate, so I'm going to go ahead and bait him up. I've kind of given him a restriction. He's excluded from coming around that lattice down there. Oh, by the way, my tomatoes have already reached six feet, so I'm going to start getting harvest on those. And the goji berries are going nuts. I'm redundant. But anyway... I'm going to go ahead and bait the trap with some uh, corn. I got some cucumbers. I got some okra cut because he's been eating okra leaves. Look at the okra plants right there. Those have been shredded. He probably knocks them down, pulls them down, and then eats them. So he's coming in here working that area. So he's going to have to come around this lattice right here. And I'm going to have a trap right there next to it. And when he tries to go in there to get his favorite food, probably that okra right now. Hopefully we'll catch him. All right. Brown on it. All right. So I baited the traps. You can see right under those okra leaves he hasn't got to yet. So he'll be going for them tonight. I hope. All right. Doing a little watering. We haven't had rain in days. All right, folks. Sign out for now, but you can see I got the tomatoes up to six foot, and here it is, first of August. So, you know, I'm gonna get a lot of production between now and the end of September once they get up to some height because of the trees, basically. All right, 
sign out for now. Hey folks, well I had an idea. I thought, you know, with these yogo chips that Doug likes so much, I'd come in here to catch a varmint. How do you do it? What's the best way to get a varmint into a cage? Well, he loves them. And he has advised me that a couple of these little yo-yo chips, it's a yogurt chip for bunnies. The sweet smell of this, put that in that cave, in the uh, bait station, just a couple of them. They'll give off a lot of good scent. It might help me. Right, Doug? Oh, here, you can have one. Oop, shoot, you dropped it. Here. Here. Is your eyesight not too good? What's up with you? Okay, there you go. Give me that one. Uh, Alright, let's go kill Hey, what about while I'm at it? Why not grab a little bit of alfalfa uh, pellets? That's Doug's food. And we'll go ahead and, hey, I'm getting some great squash now. And I'm just gonna take this, just gonna sprinkle it in the, in the cake. Gene. He's probably gonna smell it. See that? Is yo yo pet? Oh shit. That's not good. That's not gonna trigger the cage. I gotta fix this. Alright, folks. Third time's a charm. I got him. This cucumber. He couldn't reach that one. No, I caught the groundhog last night. Beating the trap. I don't wanna bother him. But I tell you what. This marmot, he took the bait. Show you what we got here. This guy's been nibbling, nibble, 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 nibble. That's him. He's a groundhog. Also known as a woodchuck. He's a marmot. He's big. But he's been eating on my okra. Look what he did to these leaves. He'd probably just pulling these down like that and eating them. Well, he's going to a new home. He's starting to attack my tomatoes and eat my tomatoes. So, he's got to go. But you can see those guys are up six foot now. All right, man, we're going to take you somewhere new. All right, folks, let's take him out. All right, folks, well, here we are at the Triad Park. It's about a 400-acre park here, uh, joining Forsyth and Guilford County, and I'm letting this guy go. The Field of Honor is up there. This is an amphitheater, it's beautiful, and back here there is nothing but wilderness for this guy. And he's, all right, Punxsutawney Phil. Here he is, the woodchuck. He's been eating my garden, eating my tomatoes, eating my cucumbers, and we're gonna let him go. And uh, you've been a joy to have around and there you go head on off you know um these woodchucks punxsutawney phil you know they hibernate in the burrow and i've got a big burrow we'll go back and look at that at my house he's been there for several years and causing damage every year well this year he really he must be just getting some size to him because he was eating everything and uh it was about time to get one of these have a heart traps and go ahead and bait it and let him go. But uh, someplace where he can just, you know, be in the wilderness. He was just doing too much damage. All right, folks. Tommy Cowett signing out how to trap a groundhog or a woodchuck, whatever you want to call that rodent. And uh, other rodents, raccoons, possums, and everything else. All right. Tommy signing out for now. Y'all have a great one. Bye.